Hey guys, this is Jerry Flores Point for Kids First, and today we're at the Press Junket for, for McFarland USA. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to go to a couple press conferences, ask people questions, and interview a couple stars. Let's go learn about the film. Hi, my name is Jerry. This, this song? Um, anyway, you guys just all did fantastic in the film. I absolutely love your performance, but I have a question for Kevin. So you did a lot of different cameras over a lot of different genres. Do you have any character that you have not done yet, but you want to do? No, I really have, uh, you know, I've been able to do a lot of things in the movies. I've been able to run with the Buffalo, you know, I've been able to get your perfect game. In Yankee Stadium and in the bathtub with Susan Sarandon. <laughs> got a lot of chance to do a lot of things. Um, the, um, and I, I enjoy sports, but I enjoy sports so much to the point that I wouldn't do a movie unless I thought it had a chance to be good. That's how much I like them. Uh, I'm not dying to do a sports thing and, and have it just look average. And um, No, I, I, I really, uh, there's nothing that I covet out there. I, I wait for something uh, to come along that, that really is a clear sound that I can respond to. <coughs> I can just really move to it. Um, so, uh, not looking for, you know, the next, you know, the, the next sports movie at all by any stretch. I, I did two sports movies back to back, Field of Dreams and Bull Durham. No one thought that was a smart idea, but those movies separated themselves so much. So, if I plan my life so much in advance, I'll miss this. I would have missed McFarland by getting in my mind what I'm going to do in my life. I mean, we all have to have a North Star that we kind of fix on and we go to. But life is so much about the things that bump into you. And, uh, you know, I was really, you know, I was really happy and, and uh, you know, how this really happened. And Nikki and I know the story more than anybody, but it's one, I, it's one that I treasure. And the executive producer Mario, uh, he really, they really pushed me. Hi, uh, I was wondering, well this is for Jim and the Diaz's, do you think this film will inspire kids that were in your situation when you guys were younger? I do, I definitely do. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's such an inspiration to, uh, to see that kids can come out of the fields and kids can uh, have some success. Uh, with the right attitude and with the work ethics that uh, you can pick up from cross country, I, I just definitely do feel that uh, it will inspire a lot of kids to go on and, and do better, I'm sure. I do as well, only because this is unlike any other film. There's no other sequel, anything close to it. Um, you have some Hispanic kids from a real small town and um, there's, there's nothing to relate it to, so I think um, it's, it's nothing less than a, an inspiration. Well, and more than anything, I think that, you know, uh, working the fields, there's a lot of kids that, that think they have to stay there, and that, that's, that's their calling. Uh, we certainly felt that way uh, growing up, that that was going to be our, our lifestyle. And I think with this movie coming out, I think that it's going to inspire uh, uh, kids to not only, you know, do their best in, in, in sports or education, but to, to know that there's uh, bigger, better uh, things out there, and there's uh, these doors that can open. Uh, we live in the United States, the greatest country in the world, and so, you know, uh, you, you can do everything that you set your mind to. So I think this movie is definitely going to inspire young people. Hi, I'm Carlos. I'm Jerry. What's up, man? And I'm reporting for Kids First, and today I'm interviewing Carlos, who plays Thomas in the film. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. And yourself? Pretty good. Good. So, in the film, you play pretty much the top runner on the team, and you were supposed to do like a mile in five minutes, something like that. Uh -huh. What was the training for that? It must have been very intense. It really was, man. I really hope you never have to go through it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was just, you know, it was a lot of training. In the mornings, we would uh, go to Santa Clarita and run like five or six miles uh, wow. together as a team. So we had a real, which is important, you always have to have a good community around you. And so, like, together the guys, when I, when I couldn't make it or someone else couldn't make it, we, uh, we pulled each other together, you know. Mm -hmm. So, if, when I wanted to cry, you know, they had the tissue and they kicked me to keep going, you know, so <laughs> it was one of those things. 
Um, and, and also the, the strength training uh, in Redondo Beach that I did at nights uh, with Brick Fitness. And it all just kind of helped get me to what we end up seeing on the screen. Hmm. So. And in the final race, I'm not going to spoil anything, okay. but how did you feel when you crossed the finish line on the final race? That's a great question. Thank you. You're very welcome. Um, so remember all that training I was talking about? Yeah. That was really, really hard. Yeah. And I was like, why am I doing this? You ever go through something like that? We're like, why am I doing this? There's oh, no yeah. end result, right? Yeah. Well, what you're talking about, I wouldn't, that was real. We 100% did it. There oh, was wow. nothing fake about it. That was real. Oh, wow. And if it wasn't through everything that I did, there's no way that I would have been able to beat him. And so the, the reason I say it's a great question is because I know right now, you know, when we're younger, we're like, okay, I don't see the end result. You know, I don't know what it is. I'm going and like nothing's cracking. It will work. You know, so the end result is there, but you got to put the work in to get there. Hmm. So awesome question. Thank you. And you're how welcome. was it to record in Mick Far Lane and uh -huh. kind of live in the city as if so cool. you lived it? Yeah, pretty much, man. Yeah, it was awesome. We were there for about uh, three weeks shooting the movie. The town was super cool. The kids were awesome. You know, they, they were always running around. The food was great. If you like tacos, go there for the tacos. They're awesome. Uh, and, and the community, they just supported us, man. And it was it really helped us get into the character that, that we needed to get in and the mindset. And it was, if I could do it all over again, I would. Hmm. And what do you think is your favorite part of the entire process? Of what? The filming McFarland? Yes. McFarland or, uh, the, my favorite part of it is, uh, honestly, I have a nine-year-old little brother. And he really has not been allowed, not been allowed to watch anything I've done because they've been a little more rated R. Mm. My favorite part is that he finally gets to see something that I've done because, you know, he's going to be moved and, and want to chase his dreams, whatever they are, and know that he can. Oh, that's very sweet. Thanks, man. Thank you. And how did you feel when you got the phone call, you got the part? It was Christmas all over again. <laughs> like, literally, all the Christmases boiled into one I got, them. and each time I got the gift that I wanted. You know, it was like that. So, I know being on set is a lot of fun. Did you guys do any pranks or some fun yeah, stuff? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did, for sure. Um, so, we got Danny Diaz and, uh, and David Diaz. Mm -hmm. We got them last. So, what we would do is when we were training, when, when the new person would come in, um, when they would ask to go to the bathroom, because they always did, because they're nervous. They're like, okay, I want to go breathe, you know, go to the bathroom. I don't want them to know I'm nervous, but we knew. And um, they went to the bathroom, and then when they would come out, we'd scare them. <laughs> and we record it, so we have a lot of videos that we want to let everyone see because it's just not nice. But um, we have some fun members up here. So yeah. that does sound fun. Yeah. And in one scene, you're running over a pile of almonds, I think they are, mm -hmm. that are picked, and it's kind of like running over hills. How was that? Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it was very hard, uh, but you know we got through it. But it was it was real. When when you see us going up the hills, that's all real, man. And again, that's from the training. I wouldn't been able to do it. If I had done that, because I had no idea what the hills were going to be like, hmm. you know, so. And did you meet the real Thomas? I did. I met Thomas, and um, and what's super cool about him, uh, which inspires me, is, you know, it's always a good reminder to, to be humble, because you know how cool it is to, to have a movie, like, that made about your your person? The yeah. seven people? Well, these people are so awesome, which makes the story that much more amazing, that they're not proud about having a movie made about them. They're proud about having a movie made about their community, our culture, and family. And mm. so like, that, those dudes are awesome, for That's sure. That's very sweet. Well, they're, they're sweet. Mm. Yeah. And do you have a favorite moment in the film? Oh, favorite moment, favorite moment, favorite moment, favorite moment. That's not Danny Diaz. What? That's not Danny Diaz. <laughs> That's my favorite moment. You know what I'm talking about. I think I do. All right. And what do you think people should get from this film? What do you think the message is? Uh, it's it's an overcoming it's an overcoming of your odds story, you know, like trying to going against all odds and, and overcoming them. And uh, I just man, whatever you want in life, you can get it. But the the choices that you make now um, will determine your outcome. So I just want people to keep the uh, you know their head on straight. And if you have a dream, you can get it. But put the work in. Hmm. Does that make sense? I think it does. You want me to clear it up a little more? Mm, You're good? I don't think so. How about you viewers? Do you think it's clear? Let me know. <laughs> Twitter, at Carlos Prads. Tell me if I'm really, really dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you are. I think I you're know, very smart. A joke. Thank you, man. Thank you very much. You're very smart yourself. So you're talking about how hard the training was. Do you think there was a hardest scene, like, physically? Uh, the hardest scene physically? Yeah. The almonds. Mm. Yeah, that was very hard. And at... 
after you finished everything, what mm -hmm. were you thinking like? And realizing you have to do everything again and again and mm -hmm. again. What mm -hmm. were you thinking? Um, here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> That's really it. At that moment, you're like, I'm here. I got to do a job, and uh, I'm here to do it. Yeah. And if you could choose anybody to watch this film, who would you choose? Anybody to watch this film? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. Who would I like to watch this film? You know, there was an old movie, and uh, unfortunately I can't remember his name, the, of the actor, but it was called The Rocketeer. Mm -hmm. and, Billy Campbell. I'm sorry? Billy Campbell. Billy Campbell, yes, thank you. Uh, Billy Campbell. And when I was a kid, I had this Easter basket, and, uh, and I used to put it on my head, and then I would get like a backpack, because the Rocketeer is about this guy that has this rocket, you know, it's a Rocketeer, mm -hmm. and he flies all around. Now, I couldn't fly, but I pretended like I was, and that's what started my acting bug. So if anyone could watch it, it would be Billy Campbell and the whole cast of the Rocketeer, and say thank you. Mm -hmm. I would like to thank them for putting the bug in me. Hmm. So in the film, Kevin Costner, who plays uh, Coach White, is mm -hmm. kind, of, kind of almost your father figure. Mm -hmm. Do you think that is also going on in the set? That he kind of like mentor you and help you? Yeah, he definitely did. You know, Kevin, he, um, he's, he's such a wise uh, and talented and, and like creative individual, especially within the film industry, on top of the amazing things that he does in the world to, um, for a better cause for all of us. Um, Kevin knows things that, that, I, that I don't know yet because I'm not, I haven't seen and gone through what Kevin has. Um, and he just made sure that, what I, that we all felt comfortable and that no matter what, at the end of the day, we always had Superman having our back. You know, so he was there. And do you have any memorial, well, not memorial, memorable mm -hmm. moments that, well, on set that you would like to tell me about? You mean there's something funny or like? Well, funny or just that you loved? That I loved the first day. Hmm. The first day, because then it was real, you know, and it set the tone for the rest of the film. Huh. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Thank you so much for talking to yeah, me about man. this awesome You're film. welcome, dude. Come on in. All right. Hi, I'm Jerry Ors, and I'm reporting for Kids First. Right now, I'm interviewing Nikki, who's the director of McFarlane USA. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. Well, this is just such a stupendous film, and I want to know, what got you interested in wanting to direct this wonderful film? I was really inspired. I was really inspired by, obviously, by Jim White and what he achieved mm -hmm. and, and the legacy he created. But I was also really inspired by the people of McFarland mm -hmm. and, other, and other communities like them. Um, by how hard they work, by their commitment to family and to community and faith. And I thought that this was an inspiring story that I could tell. Mm. No, I love the movie so much. I'm going to wear this hat all the time. <laughs> Go Cougars. It was a, I just want to say it was a wonderful movie. It was truly inspiring. Mm -hmm. And I just want to know, how did you get the actors to show so much emotion? And you're kind of known for that because the, your, the actors in your movie, they just show so much emotion. It's just unbelievable. How do you get them to do that? Um, it's a really good question. Firstly, you cast the right people. Mm -hmm. And three of these guys are actually from there. Oh. Yeah, I mean, they are actually from McFarland. It's a tiny place, too. And so, for them, the story is absolutely real. This is literally the story of their lives. So, when you have real truth and... And when you have actors committed to that truth, that's what makes it emotional. And it's a really different thing than being sentimental, because it's very easy to tell a sentimental story, but not so easy to tell an emotional story. Very true, yeah. very true. I think our audience can agree with that. <laughs> and you spoke of casting. Can you tell us kind of the whole process of casting? Because yeah. I know it's just not your audition people. It was kind of more mm. special than that. Yeah, well, it's really hard. to Even in a big city like Los Angeles, it's really hard to find seven teenage Mexican boys that can act really well and can run really fast. There's just not, I, there's no agency that I can ring up and say, <laughs> send me a hundred of them that, so I can choose. So what we did was we went to places like Bakersfield, well LA obviously, San Diego, Texas, and we did open calls, which means anybody can come. 
in, anybody come along and we'll put you on tape and we'll see if you've got the, the thing we're looking for. And, and amazingly enough, three of those kids came from McFarland. Oh. Yeah. Isn't that great? Yeah, that is pretty cool. So how, how did you choose uh, Kevin Costner to play the role of mm. Coach White? Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've seen Kevin's other movies, but he's got an impeccable pedigree in sports movies. <laughs> so he was kind of the no-brainer. He's the, he's the best guy you could go to. So we went to the top first. And he, you know, thank goodness, said yes. Because I can't imagine having made this movie with anybody else. Hmm. You were at the press conference, right? Yes, I was. Yeah, you can see, you can see how, what a humble guy he is and how generous he was with, with the other actors. It was amazing. He's very nice. And I know on set, um, I interviewed one of the actors and he said that Ken was kind of father figure and very mm. nice and mm. very caring. Mm. So, me as a, a filmmaker, I wanted to know what tips do you give filmmakers who are trying to start up and mm. try and do emotional films, maybe like you? Okay, this is my top tip, and I'm going to give it to you mm. for nothing. Oh, please. <laughs> You're too calm. Um, I'd say the most important thing for me and my best bit of advice is even though you're the filmmaker and you're the director and you get to make every decision, you are never bigger or more important than your story. Hmm. The story is the thing you must serve. You know, hmm. it doesn't serve you or your career or your ego. You serve it. And if you work from that place where you're trying to make the material as good as it can be with everything you have, then you have a much better chance of making a successful movie and having a successful career. Hmm. That's a very good tip. Yeah, good. And did you know ever since you were young that you want to be a filmmaker? I've known, I knew since I was about 17, I think, 16 or 17. I, you know, I come from New Zealand. I, it, it's like the global equivalent <coughs> of McFarland. It's a yeah. tiny little place, right? And so, you know, it's a big dream to think you could make movies. It's a gigantic dream to think that you could make a Hollywood movie, particularly when you're a teenager from New Zealand. Um, but I did, I did have a very strong sense that filmmaking was where all the things I love come together. And there's no other profession that is quite the same because, you know, I, I love photography and writing and music and performance. I love to work collaboratively. I love to make something out of nothing. Um, so uh, film is a very sort of natural place for me to end up. Hmm. That makes sense. So I know that the actors had to train pretty tough and very mm -hmm. violently to get their bodies in fit, mm -hmm. even though they're mostly fit. So what was that for you? How, how's that for you? Um, preparing the actors? Yeah. Well, it's easy for me because I, you know, <laughs> I'm not getting up at six o'clock in the morning and, and, and going through punishing kind of physical training. Although I will say that before I started work on this project, nobody hated running more than me. I hated it. Me too. Yeah. Well, because I'm a responsible filmmaker, when I started to work on the script of this movie, and so much of it was about the experience of running, I thought, well, I'm going to have to run. <laughs> and so I started running, and I'm still running. I run just about every day. And it's 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 one of the happiest things that I do. It's a it's a really it's a really great thing to do. So that was how it kind of transformed me well, into makes, a runner from a non-runner. That makes sense. Well, thank you so much for answering my questions and talking. Such a pleasure. Me. Thank you very much. Okay. Good luck to you. Thank you. Kids first is amazing zing. Well guys, the event was over. It was a blast. I learned a lot about the film and met a lot of cool people. Don't forget to go to our Kids First channel to see the full coverage and 
and my review of the film as well. Don't forget to see it coming out on February 20th. I'm Jerry Ors, and I'm reporting for Kids First. Bye. Hi, I'm Carlos Pratt, and Kids First is Amazing Zing.